Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to look at a capital gain and capital losses example. This topic is covered in income tax course, CPA exam regulation, as well as the enrolled agent exam. Before we start, I would like to remind my viewers that I would like to connect with you on a personal level. I am very active on LinkedIn, so if you have a LinkedIn account, you should connect with me. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, you should have a LinkedIn account. It's very important for your professional image. If you are a Facebook user, please like my Facebook page and connect with me on a personal level. You surely want to subscribe to my YouTube channel because this is where I house all my lectures in addition to my website, but the YouTube is more complete than the website. I do have also a Twitter account. Let's go ahead and take a look at this question that's going to help us determine how to net capital gains and capital losses and how to compute the taxes on capital gains and capital losses during the year and as a single individual recorded the following transaction involving capital asset gain on sale of unimproved land held for three years as an investment okay so let's look at the question first if in as and the 32 percent federal tax rate how much the tax results so basically they're asking us how much in as will pay okay how much in as will pay all right so so we have so the three thousand what do we call the three thousand it's a long term capital gain why because she held this asset for three years loss on a sale of a camper purchased two years ago and used for family vacation five thousand dollar so what do we do with this mm, let me think it's two years it's long term it's a loss so it's a long-term loss absolutely not it's used for family vacation this is a personal use asset and what do we do with personal use assets we can do anything with it we can do anything with personal use assets why because remember what, what i told you if individuals if taxpayer can use their personal use asset losses what you do every year you would sell some of your old stuff and you will claim losses and no one will pay taxes okay so be careful because it says family vacation that's why it's personal use gain on sale of adm stock purchased nine months ago as an investment so this is short term and it's a gain well it's a four thousand dollar short term capital gain four thousand okay we took care of that gain on sale of a fishing boat and trailer acquired 18 months ago at an auction and used for recreation recreational purposes all day let's think about this well first you have to be careful it's used for recreational purposes so it's a personal use okay but it's a gain do we have to do something about it and the answer is yes we do personal use asset sold at a gain is taxable hold on a second didn't you just said the losses are not deductible yes losses are not deductible but gains are taxable and this is long term so we have an additional this is one thousand dollar long term capital gain so we have technically um four thousand four thousand long-term capital gain and we don't have any losses and four thousand oh happened to be four thousand short-term capital gain now if we're in the 32 percent tax bracket how much taxes do we pay so let's go go back to the table this is the 32 percent tax bracket so we fall someplace here okay so now you need to remember the capital gain rules remember the capital gain rules if you're in the 10 and 12 percent tax bracket on the on the long term well well let's look at let's take care of the short term first okay because it's easy to deal with the short term let's look at this four thousand dollar short term the four thousand dollar short term short term capital gain that's subject to our order that's subject to our ordinary income tax so our ordinary income tax is 32 percent so there's no way around this so four thousand times 0.32 the tax on this short term is 1200 now what about the four thousand dollar long term capital capital gain how much do we multiply this is it 32 percent no remember as i was saying if you're in the 10 to 12 you don't pay any taxes on long term capital gain taxes if you are 22 24 32 and to a large degree 35 and those you will pay 15 percent and if you are in the 37 percent tax bracket you pay 20 percent so we are in the definitely in the comfortably in the 32 therefore we have to pay 15 percent on that 
So 4,000 times 0.15, that's 600. So the taxes in total, capital gain taxes, is 18. Uh, let me just do this one more time. 4,000 times 0 0.32, that's 1280. 1280. So in total, 1880. Okay. Now, B, it says, what if Inez was in the 12% tax bracket? Well, in the 12% tax bracket, the short-term capital gain, the 4,000, that's going to be times zero, which is equal to zero. So the, this 4,000 is no longer taxable. I'm sorry. I apologize. This 4,000, the long-term capital gain, I jumped the gun. This 4,000 here, this 4,000 is no longer taxable. Okay, so the $600 is gone. What remained is the $4,000. The $4,000, it's going to be taxed at our ordinary income, the short term, 12%. So 4000 times 0.12, that's $480. So notice, you'll pay $480 on those capital gain taxes if you are in the 12% tax bracket, and you will pay $1,880 if you are in the 32% tax bracket. Remember, short term capital gain gets your ordinary income tax rate. That's easy. Long-term capital gain, it depends on your tax bracket. If your tax bracket, and once again, 10 to 12, zero. Uh, from 22 to 35, now it's not totally 35, there's like a threshold, look at the numbers, I believe it's around 525,000, you'll pay 15%, and definitely if you're in the 37% tax bracket, you're making a lot of money, you'll pay 20%. If you have any questions, any comments about this topic, if you're studying for your CPA exam or you're studying for your college courses, study hard, it's worth it. If you want additional lectures, please visit my website. If you happen to do so, please consider donating. Thank you very much and see you on the